Hi and welcome to Elka Low Carb Ancestral Living with Pim Johnson. Today's guest is a household toxins health coach and head guru at Green Living Gurus. And she's here today to talk to us about the harmful chemicals in our homes and in our foods and what we can do to minimize our exposure to these chemicals. So welcome to the show, Therese. Thank you, Pim. Great to be here all across halfway around the world. I'm in Buffalo, New York, and it's great to be on your show. Awesome. So just to for us to know a little bit about you, if you don't mind, can you just tell us about who you are and how you became interesting in, interested in this topic? Because that's probably a topic that most people think is quite boring and they can't really be bothered to dive <laughs> into it. <laughs> right, right. And I, you know, I'm so passionate about it, but I grew up in a household in uh, Buffalo, New York, which is the western side of New York State, six hours from New York City. I like to clarify that for anybody international. Uh, we're close to Toronto, but uh, so I have three older sisters and a younger brother, and we grew up, my mother, everything was, um, and now I'm 58 now, so this is the 60s and 70s. We grew up with all healthy food. We never ate at Burger King, McDonald's, or pizza. We just had home-cooked meals and a lot of Italian and uh, Lebanese-type uh, food. And when I got older, I started realizing that we were kind of the abnormal ones. And we shopped at a little co-op here called the Lexington Co-op. And that's where we got our food. And my mother worked there. And it was just our way of our life. And then as I got older, I realized that everybody was eating so unhealthy and that I decided I wanted to go to college to open up a health food store, a big one. I wanted everybody to realize how important this was to live a healthy life and eat fresh food. I never did that dream of mine opening up that large health food store that everybody knows as Whole Foods now in the United States. But um, I came out a party planner. And for the past 35 years, I've been planning events and weddings and parties. But throughout the last 35 years, I have been helping people get toxic chemicals out of their house. I've been consistently studying and taking courses and learning even more about how all these environmental toxins and how all these chemicals are affecting us and trying to educate myself as much as possible. And then um, when 2020 hit, and actually prior to COVID, I decided in 2020, I really wanted to transition from planning events, because I'd planned over 700 events. I wanted, kind, I wanted to get back into what I really set out my life to do, and it was really helping people get healthy and pe helping people get these harmful chemicals out of their homes. And I also, uh, cancer is a part of everybody's life. That was a, a huge mission of mine is avoiding carcinogens and cancer causing chemicals. And I had an aunt and uncle die of cancer. And um, it's just something that I knew I wanted to get back into uh, full, full time. And then COVID hit and it was a perfect time for me to really dive in head first and really take it to another level. And here I am today. That's such a good mission. I love that. Yeah, thank um, you. So the big question, <laughs> you're welcome. So the big question here is, if these chemicals are so dangerous, why are they allowed to put that in our products and our food? That's a very good question. And honestly, it's asked all the time, even from people, all of us ask the question, how can they be putting these chemicals in our products we put on our skin, in the food that we eat, uh, in the air that we breathe? It's just, and it's everywhere. And the United States has over 100,000 chemicals on the market today. Every year, over a thousand chemicals are allowed to enter the market. So you could only imagine how many, I mean, how, how do you control all these chemicals? How do you control all these chemical companies? And that's a huge factor. These chemical companies are absolutely mammoth. They have so much money. They make so much money. They are behind so many different products. They are tied into the political system. They donate a lot of money. They have lobbyists in Washington 
uh, just fighting for them to keep these chemicals on the market. So it's ongoing. The battle has been for decades. Um, things are starting to shift a little bit and we're starting to see that, uh, the lawsuits basically that are coming out suing Monsanto and Bayer and all these other chemical companies. And unfortunately, it's people that are suffering and people that have died and people that really have health problems that have brought this to the forefront. So, but why are they allowed on the market? They're allowed on the market because in the United States, there's a policy here, unlike uh, European um, Union, and I don't know what it is in like in New Zealand, but you can put um, a a product on the on the market here without necessarily having it tested to be um, okay, or, you know that it's been uh, proven innocent, okay, proven that it's okay, and unlike um, and it's it's prove it's um, healthy. Unlike sorry, unlike over in Europe, you have to prove that product is safe before it goes on the market. So we have it's it's um, innocent until proven guilty method here. So there is um, and it's horrible. And then you have products like the Roundup, which is sprayed on lawns and it's got glyphosate in it. And that product is has been allowed on the market for decades. And they knew that this glyphosate was horrible for not only us as humans, but it's horrible for our environment. It goes into our waterway. Well, there's now over 150,000, somewhere in that range, um, lawsuits against Monsanto, and they're winning, but it's still on the market. It is still on the market. Monsanto is absolutely, and I think Bayer now owns it, but whatever the case may be, these chemical companies are massive, and it's going to take a long battle of to get these chem- chemicals off the market. But again, there's over a hundred thousand of them. So unfortunately, it's not going to be in our lifetime that all this is going to come to fruition that people are starting to realize these are harming us, killing us, etc. So it's really us as humans. Um, and that's why I'm doing this, um, the rest of my life that I want to get the word out there as much as possible. So. Yeah, and it it's so needed, as you say, it's a thousand new every year. So it's just yes. piling on and on. And it can cause all sorts of different 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 issues, not not just cancer, but since that's what uh, you're most passionate about, I'm wondering if you would like to explain to us a little bit about how these chemicals ca- are involved in the cancer process. Yeah, no no problem. And, you know, it's um, cancer, of course, is one illness of, you know, there's diabetes, there's uh, so many different autoimmune illnesses, there's weight factors, but cancer is so apparent right now. And I, I read something the other day, and every time I read it, I think, my God, when I grew up, it was not that apparent. And now it's one in every two people is going to get cancer. Our chemicals that have, it's crazy. And the chemical usage has just gone up. It's it's just, it correlates. And not only does it correlate, but there's chemicals that they know cause cancer. So, but there's many factors that can go into somebody getting cancer. And, um, and, and if you understand, like your age, obviously, your family history, we hear about that all the time. Um, what your health is like. Have you had, you had viruses, um, bacteria in your system, your immune system, your lifestyle? What, what do you, um, come in contact with every day? What do you touch? What do you eat? What do you drink? What are you breathing in? Um, what harmful substances are you coming in contact with? during the day. So as I said, there's over 100,000 chemicals and they can be getting into your lifestyle so regularly. And they're found in everyday items. They're found in your food. They're in your personal care products. They're in your packaging of um, your takeout containers. They're in prescription drugs. They're in over-counter drugs. They're in household items. They're in your lawn care products. They're in your storage containers. It's overwhelming. It's in dry cleaning. You know, so whatever you set out to do during the day, 
um, these chemicals you could be coming in contact with. Now, not all chemicals can cause cancer and not all chemicals uh, potentially are harmful. Um, but the, the ones that I focus on the most are the ones that are known to be causing cancer. And the ones that are known to be causing cancer alter the uh, cellular metabolism in our bodies and it damages our DNA in our cells. So it interferes with our normal cellular process. Now, I'm not a scientist and I'm not a doctor, but I've studied enough to know what these chemicals are doing to us. And the number one thing you want to um, know, you know, learn is about these chemicals and identifying the substances um, of these chemicals in the environment that cause people to become ill and um, causing people to come ill with cancer, which then would help prevent, um, make preventative measures for yourself. So really it's helping you, you, and it, it sounds like it's overwhelming. It sounds like, oh my God, there's chemicals everywhere there. How am I going to ever do this? You can do it. Everybody can do it and it's taking baby steps, but it's really knowing, um, paying attention to what you are exposed to and what you are coming in contact with. And you start questioning it. And everybody that I've helped and taught along the way and coached, they it makes me so happy because they start reading the labels. They start looking, you know, they, they go in someone else's house and they might see a candle and they look at the label and the candle. And um, so it's really your lifestyle and what you expose yourself to. Yeah. And speaking of which, because you said, you know, they put a lot of those things in, you know, hand cream or face cream or shower gel and those kind of things. So how easily is it for us to absorb those kind of chemicals when they are on our skin as opposed to when we're, for example, eating them or breathing them in? Is is there a difference in the uptake? Do we have to be as worried about those kind of um, products? Absolutely. So uh, lotions, um, shampoos, um, any beauty care products, um, hairsprays. Um, I mean, the, the list goes on and on and on. And I've gone into people's homes where, you know, they have 30 products in their bathroom. And I don't want to scare them, but, you know, we try to change one at a time, whether it's a shampoo and condition. Let's change the ones that you really are using all the time. Hairspray deodorant. These are all loaded with chemicals. And yes, to answer your question, they are getting into your system. They can penetrate your skin. They do. They get into your bloodstream. They can change your DNA. And the other issue with all of these chemicals that has not even been, nobody really even knows. So the chemicals that you're putting on your skin, then you're eating, you know, say you're eating non-organic food and you may be eating pesticides and herbicides and fungicides nobody even knows how all these chemicals mix together and what they are doing inside your body so that's a really scary thing you know because they might say that it you know the chemical that's in your lotion this is say it's a paraben which is, uh, uh, is uh, they've, and I don't, I bring that one up because you'll see a lot of times paraben free because that has been known to, there's a couple different types of parabens, but that has been known to um, wreak havoc on uh, um, our endocrine cycle. But um, the parabens um, are um, getting into your bloodstream and the, might be, they might say the level of that paraben, you know, is such a small concentrate, uh, which you'll hear this all the time, but it's only a small, the problem is that's just one product. So if you're using everything else out there that has chemicals in it, and you're putting it all in your body, it's, you you could have, you know, toxic overload is how we call it in the industry because your body can only handle so much. I mean, our bodies are wonderful and they're made to fight off a lot of toxins that come into your system. But 
it can only handle so much. And then you think about little kids too, which really makes me sad because um, their their bodies are so small and their immune systems are so fragile. And you know, they're put there's. I see products at the at the grocery store that kids bubble baths that have fragrance in them and the fragrance has all this all these toxic harmful cancer causing chemicals in it and so you know it's just it's being aware it's just taking a step i mean if you're listening to this today it's just starting to think about being your own advocate whatever country you're in you really have to look at the products that you are buying and turning them over and seeing what's what's in them. And if you can't find what's in them, go on to their website. I do that all the time for people. Sometimes you can't find them, though, because these companies are sneaky and they don't want you to know what's in them. <laughs> yeah, and, and you make such a good point as well, because when they do research in those cases that they do research on these chemicals to prove that they're not harmful, they always do it in isolation. So when you have a mix of God knows how many different chemicals. No one has done that research. No one knows what is actually happening. Exactly. So you are the guinea pig. We are the guinea pigs. We are. We all are. And you know. Yep. And and one more point on that is, you can control what you bring into your house. None of us can control what we what happens to us when we walk outside. You know, we have outdoor air pollution. We have fires all over the place. There's tobacco smoke. There's laundry detergent that's being sprayed in you know into the air from people's homes. So you can control what you you do the best you possibly can. And and, and actually, the indoor air um, in the United States is somewhere between two and I've heard up to 50% more toxic than outdoor air. So people think our outdoor air is polluted, but really it's our indoor air that's really, really harmful. Well, that's a problem because <laughs> we spend a lot of time in, indoors. Right. We all do, right? But there's there's so many things that you can do to um, help besides looking at all these products, you know, you're, what you're exposing yourself to, whether it's cleaning um, products or paint, um, or you're spraying your lawn because those herbicides and pesticides can come into your house. And are you opening up your windows regularly, which is huge, even in the middle of winter, I'm in winter right now, um, open your windows, clean your fans, get your ductworks cleaned without chemicals, of course. <laughs> But would take your shoes off when you come in the house. So there's things you can do that can help. Yeah. So what are the big things that I need to look at for when I'm buying products? Like, which ones are the worst offenders that I just need <laughs> to cross off the list? Like, that, these are not in any of my household products or whatever it is I'm buying. Well, the number one ingredient that I tell everybody to avoid on a bottle if it's got any kind of scent to it, the word fragrance, now again, this is in the United States, but the word fragrance on any bottle is loaded with horrible chemicals, cancer causing, um, weakening your immune system, uh, weakening your endocrine system, just horrible. And the reason why I say fragrance is because there's a there's a law here in the United States goes back to the 1940s during when the perfume industry was um, coming onto the market, and there were all these different perfume manufacturers, and they all wanted they all had hidden trade secrets, so they didn't want to tell anybody what was in their perfume because the other perfume would then know, right? So they. they Back then, the law was created called, you know, they, they didn't have to say what was in the word fragrance. Anybody, you can make a product here and put fragrance in it, and you can put anything you want in it, and you do not have to disclose that. So if it's got a fragrance, any kind of fragrance on there, run the other way. And so if you see a product that says fresh ocean breeze or fresh um, lemon, um, scent and it doesn't have any lemon in it and you turn it around it says fragrance i mean all the shampoos that i smell that have all the 
you know, the, the, I don't know what they, apple, brie, whatever the scents are. I laugh every time I see them. I'm like, oh my God, those are so bad. Um, so candles are, you know, also they have fragrance in them. Sometimes the word perfume or perfume they will use um, just to kind of sneak around a little bit. Natural, natural smell. They can, they can, they don't have to disclose all those ingredients and um, it's just, that's the number one thing I would look for in every product across the board from laundry detergent to soaps, shampoos, cleaning supplies, uh, anything you, anything you buy, really turn it over and look for that word. Wow. So, so what type of ingredients is it that they don't have to declare? Because that's quite important. <laughs> they can just put something in there and... Not oh, let yeah. us know. Yeah, they do not have to let you know at all. It's, I mean, in the in our health and wellness world, we all call it the other F word. And because we get so angry that that is still a law, that it is still out there. It's so, but the the chemical companies are fighting that because the money that they would lose once they start having to disclose that, um, all these different ingredients are in their fragrance. Um, that would be, it would open up a huge can of worms with the amount of thousands of products out there that would have to start disclosing what was in their product. And sometimes people are like, really? The FDA, our Food and Drug Administration, really? The Environmental Protection Agency, they're going to allow people to do this? Yes, this is real. You look it up. It is crazy to think about it, but it is true. And hopefully, maybe soon, it will not be true because it's so, so maddening to all of us. And we fight, we, we write, I write my politicians all the time about this. I mean, it's in, you know, it's in, it's in makeup. It's in everything and it's affecting, um, our hormones. It's affecting, um, every, every, every it, so much of our, health. So, and as you can see, I get so crazy about this and so passionate about fragrance. I'm like, you know, and sometimes a, a bottle of something will come in my house or somebody will say, oh, this said all natural on it. And I get a, you know, a birthday gift or something. And I'm like, I hate to tell you, but I can't even bring that into my house. Look at the back of it. Don't, Pre, pre, don't ever look at the word all natural because that's called greenwashing. They're trying to get you thinking that it's all natural. We, you know, most people know you never buy anything that says natural, but who knows? It's, you know, it's just being aware of what's in there. So. Absolutely. It's the same with the, just no added sugar, <laughs> all natural sugar, as if that right? was any better. <laughs> exactly. Same thing there. Yeah. And sugar. Oh my God. We could talk about sugar for about an hour because the amount of words that are, <laughs> Different descriptions yeah. for sugar are crazy. Yeah, exactly. that's a whole other. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, when we're talking about food, um, when it comes to uh, say fruit and vegetables, that sort of thing, is it because all vegetables are they have their own pesticides? Obviously, that's how they defend themselves. Are these less harmful to humans? Do you think than those that are um, or non-organic? So what's the difference there? Does it matter? Are there some of them that are less problematic that we should be focusing on, especially if we can't afford buying organic vegetables, for example? So are you asking like what, um, like are there certain fruits and vegetables <laughs> to questions. buy? That That's okay. So there's certain <laughs> fruits and vegetables um, that that are on a list that you definitely want to buy organic. They have a soft skin. They're soaking it. So think about the strawberries out on the fields. They're spraying those strawberries heavy duty with pesticides out in California here. Okay. We live near a, a strawberry farm for a little while in California. And I was, every time we drove by the, they'd have gas masks on all of the workers because those pesticides and herbicides are so toxic. Those are going not only into the ground, those are going into the strawberries. The soft skin of a strawberry, you're eating pesticides. Whereas a banana, 
has a sh- you know skin, so you're taking the skin off, or an avocado. So I always tell people, just think of it that way. An orange, if you can't buy everything organic, buy buy the ones that you know that are can soak up these these chemicals. You can't. You, I mean, they're in the 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 fruit. So, and then on top of that, the um the 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 problem with then you get into GMOs, genetically modified um, organisms. The they're injecting these pesticides into the seeds and the roots. I mean, it's just a, it's a, it's a whole vicious cycle. Uh, I buy pretty much a hundred percent organic. That's me. But I, every piece of fruit and vegetable I buy, we are we treat it like it's gold. Um, the outside of my lettuce that is, um, brown, we juice it. The outside of, you know, you cut off parts of carrots, we put it in the freezer, um, carrot, any vegetable, onions, carrots, you name it. If you're broccoli, cauliflower, we do not throw anything away. And well, not only do we not, but we put it in our compost. But what I'm trying to say is, once you buy organic and you know you're you're spending that kind of money, and sometimes it's not always that much more, especially if you go to a farmer's market and you try your best to get um, food that's actually local. But save all those ends of all of your fruits and vegetables, put them in the bag, put them in the freezer, and then you can make wonderful broth. So you can get, um, I'd like to say, bigger bang for your buck. Yeah. And I probably went off on a tangent there. Sorry, but. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so what about meat? Does it matter if the meat is like free range, eating grass, for example, or if it's uh, more commercially fed with grains, etc.? cetera? Uh, absolutely. Um, if, and again, if you've ever wa- been to a farm where they are treating um, where the, they're grass fed cattle, because um it's so wonderful. They look so healthy and happy walking around eating grass that is not sprayed with chemicals, um, as opposed to, oh, God, I've seen some of the farms where this is the opposite way and they're, they just don't look like healthy, healthy, um, animals. But, uh, you know, yes, they're, you're getting exposed to chemicals and hazards, hazardous substances that they are using in and and treating their animals animals with antibiotics. Well, you are going to eat those. That is known that it's going to be um, part of the meat that you will be eating if it's not grass fed. And what they are what they are treating the um, the grass with too. So I know it's overwhelming. It is, um, and you again. I just want to reiterate: you take baby steps. You do what you possibly can. Maybe you stop buying processed meat, which has known carcinogens in it and which has um, known like bacon and salami and pepperoni and sausage and it's preserved. Um, they, they, there's many studies that show that you want to limit your processed foods. Hot dogs. Hot dogs are big, big here in Buffalo. Um, now, you know, do you want to, you don't want to eat them all the time, maybe eat them once in a while, but you, you limit your foods that are processed that have been salted or fermented or cured or smoked. So you just pay attention. You try to do the best you possibly can get as many fruits and vegetables that are organic and, um, limit the amount of processed foods, not only meat, but even, um, vegetables and, I always say if it's out of a can or or a box, you want to limit it. Try not to eat out of a can or a box. For sure. Yeah. So I have a lot of people that eat a lot of meat on my channel. And I've got this question so many times that I can't afford to buy free range meat, etc. So what I usually recommend them to do is that they get a piece of meat that is maybe commercially raised and then they go to the butchers and maybe get their hands on some grass-fed 
beef fat trimmings, for example, because there are a lot of toxins in the fat. Do you think that is good advice or do I have to rethink that? Well, that's, that's, you know, that's, I'm an eat, I eat meat. I, we love meat here. I, um, I, I we buy a quarter of a cow. Um, my husband loves bacon. We buy it from a butcher where we know that it's organic. Um, I used to buy a, a half of a pig, but then I, we had way too much meat. <laughs> but so, yeah, um, so the, um, the point that I'm making is everybody has to make their decisions with what they're eating. You don't want to be eating. Meat. Like I'm always on top of my husband's like, we don't need meat every day. We don't need meat every day. Come on. We're having vegetable soup with lentils tonight. Um, so you, you, you want to, you don't want to overdo anything that you're um, eating. You know, I don't know if that was the answer to the question, but um, did, did you have another part to that question? No, I, w I was thinking more in terms of the, that. From my understanding, the part of the let's take cow as an example, the part of the cow that will be storing most toxins, except for the liver possibly, would be the fat rather than the muscle meat. So if you can re-engineer your steak and get a very lean steak from a, um, a commercially fed cow and then add some just fat from a free range cow and complete your meal that way so that you get the fat part that is healthy and then muscle meat that might yeah. be okay to eat. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, I'm not a dietitian and the, there's probably a lot of uh, pros and cons, but I think you are right when the toxins are stored in the fat. I do know that. Um, so you, you limit the fat intake and get your fat other areas. Um, because we know yeah. good, healthy fat is important for us as well. Absolutely. Okay, so most of us, like everyone, <laughs> has definitely been exposed to some of these toxins to some degree or another, depending on you know your diet, your environment, and how aware you've been of all of these things previous to hearing this conversation. So do we need to detox? And if so, how do we do that? So, yeah, uh, I think it's important to, again, take it slow. Um, detox is also an overused word because everybody wants, everybody wants a detox in January, right? Right after the holidays. Um, because we ate too much and we, but detoxing is a very, um, broad terminology because uh, if I had my way, I'd have everybody take a test that tests your, sometimes they do your urine, sometimes they do your blood, and it tests the level of all these chemicals in your body. I bet you they have a place in New Zealand that you can do it, but we have a lot of these labs in, in um, the United States that do that. I did it myself, and I wanted to see what chemicals were were in my body. Now, as you could imagine, I didn't have many, but I had um, one, I had BPA, by bis bisphenol, which is very, was very concerning to me because it's cancer causing. And uh, we figured out it came from our coffee pot. And our coffee pot's all plastic. And when that water heats up, it comes through the plastic and the plastic then melts, or not melts, but the the BPA can release into the coffee. And sure enough, that's what it was. So um, detoxing, there's so many areas that you could detox. One step at a time, because once you, like if you could detox your kitchen, and that's where I usually start with everybody with our program, because that's sometimes the easiest. Let's get rid of your plastic containers, big item, get glass, Not does not cost too much, right? Start to buy a little bit more organic food. These are little things that you can do. Don't um, uh, um, use plastic on top of your food and microwave it. Maybe try microwaving a lot, little less. But uh, storing things in glass can help a lot. So your kitchen is, you know, going through your pantry, maybe starting to do a little bit of makeover with your food, then move into your bathroom. 
and start looking at the products in your bathroom. So it's just taking baby steps to try to eliminate these toxic chemicals. And it's possible, it's, the, the good thing is most of these chemicals will come out of your body within a few weeks, especially, uh, the chemicals that are in food. Uh, I've seen a lot of different, um, tests and reports and studies that once you start eating organic food, the chemicals that are, um, that are on non-organic food start coming out of your system. They did a whole study on this family. And for two weeks, they, they measured their toxins. They ate all organic food for two or three weeks. I can't remember what it was. And then they measured their toxins again. And everything was like out of their system or extremely low, which is very exciting. So that's the good news. Um, yes. And it's just, yep, right. It's just taking your time to take these steps to doing that. Awesome. So... How easy is it to find other household products or products in general that don't contain any toxic ingredients whatsoever? So um, any toxic ingredients is um, hard, but there are there are ones out there. Actually, my ingredients, my products don't have any toxic ingredients. But the ones when it comes to like personal care products, it's hard, but it's not impossible. And it's why I say it's hard is because there's so many preservatives have to be used in these products. The good thing is that they're available now. They are out there. Years ago, it was so hard to find products. I would right away, I mean, I, there was only like one product line I trusted um, that I would ever use their makeup. Jane Aradale is one of them. Um, but there's so many more now. It's very exciting. There's a lot of little mom and pop type shops opening up all over the world for that matter. Um, that people are, are making, uh, healthy products without using all of these harmful chemicals. Now, where do you find them? Uh, there's a couple of things that you can do. There's the environmental working group, which is a, a I believe they're international. But um, EWG.com, Environmental Working Group, they've been around for a long time. They help be, they're like sort of the um, the watchdog when it comes to toxic chemicals. You can put in there, you can even be in the supermarket and put in the, um, the code, the, um, you know, the whatever code that's called, and scan it. And it will tell you on a level of one to 10 how toxic that product is. Now, it's a great resource for everybody starting out. Um, it's not always perfect. There's been products I found on there that have fragrance in them, but they, 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 they rate them again. And it's helpful. It's really helpful for everybody. Made Safe is another organization that I absolutely love that every product is um, certified, made safe. And um, that's, I think, madesafe.org. But those are just two organizations. There's a bunch of um, apps that you can put on your phone that you can um, see how safe products are. So that's a good thing. Um, on my website, what I've done with Amazon is I've gone through Amazon. I, and I have an Amazon store. And, um, and what I mean by that is we earn about 0.1%. I think I made $20 last year on the store, but I don't do it for that. I do it. So when people say, well, what kind of mascara? I say, I always tell them, go to the mascaras I've listed on my store on Amazon, because those are the ones that we've done research on and, um, and bedded or, or shampoos or deodorants or baby products. So I like to put things in and sometimes I find ones on there that I take off because um, eventually I see they were sold or I didn't like what they'd been doing. So I t take things. I added a bunch of what I add today. I forgot. I added a bunch of uh, makeup that I was found a new company um, out of Italy, actually. So that's um, so that, you know, go online and start looking a little bit um, about uh places you can find it because I'm sure even where you are, Pim, you know, in New Zealand, you've got lots of small mom and pop companies that um, produce great items. 
Yeah, we're lucky here where I live. There is um, mostly soap makers, etc. They like selling at the markets that we have, so that's a, a good place to start for me, I think. Markets, but, absolutely. Um, markets. Yeah. So when you were um, when you produce your products, what what's your criteria for choosing the ingredients that you have in your products? Just so, curious. Yeah, my products are cheese organics. I got really into essential oils in the past year or two. And uh, when I was helping people decide what cleaning products they um, would use in their har- homes, I I was not happy with almost everything out there. Even my, my, my health food store here was selling a product I still don't believe in. And um, it had fragrance in it. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make my own because I always cleaned with water vinegar and essential oils. And so I did a lot of research. I looked at uh, some of the essential oils that were out there that were uh, antiseptic, antiviral, antibacterial, and chose a recipe that really um, helps clean and kill kills bacteria, kills viruses um, that um, you don't need these strong harsh chemicals to clean your house. So that is what I did. I started the line because of that. And I put it in blue glass bottles, which you always want to put essential oils in. And some of these other companies that use similar ingredients that I use are in plastic. And I just believe that essential oil should be in a dark glass jar anyways. And it's recyclable and reusable. And you don't have to throw anything out because that's a whole nother story about plastic and, and the overuse of plastic in the world. We all have to cut down on plastic. So that's how I decide. And it's organic. I, I wanted all organic essential oils as well. Awesome. So where can people find you if they want to get in contact with you? And especially check out your products because that's the topic after all. <laughs> yeah, well, sure. I love helping. And I only sell in the United States right now, maybe someday, and hopefully I can sell around the world. That's my dream. But um, right now we only ship in the United States. I believe we can even ship in Canada too. But uh, so on social media, green the Green Living Gurus or our website is thegreenlivinggurus.com. And all the links are there if you want to just go to the website. We are active on Instagram, on Facebook, and then on Facebook, we also have a Tease Organics page. But you can also find that on our shop um, tab on the Green Living Gurus. We have a podcast as well, Green Living with T. And I didn't mention that. My nickname is T, T T-E-E. Um, Tease Organics, Green Live with Tea. And we have a YouTube channel, so I'm very accessible. Anybody can reach out on any of those uh, platforms. Yeah, we'll get the links up for you. So do you have any final words of wisdom before we wrap this up? Yes. And I am going <laughs> to say it again because I repeat this all the time. You have to read your labels. You have to. You have to turn them around just like you do when you buy something at the grocery store. What is in something I'm eating? What is something, what is in something I am putting on my kid's skin? What is something I'm putting on my hair? What is my husband's aftershave? What is he putting on his skin? Uh, toothpaste. I mean, the list goes on. So you really, you have to read your labels. Start knowing your ingredients and start looking at the labels uh, to see what they are putting in there. You might start seeing all these words that you cannot pronounce. And maybe when you're at home, grab grab something and just go look at some of the ingredients and see, see if they say anything. You know, Google it. See what it says out there. There's enough information out there that uh, you can find about these chemicals. To read your labels and know your ingredients. Brilliant. Thank you so much. I've oh, really absolutely. enjoyed uh, our conversation today. So thank you yeah. so much for sharing your knowledge with us. You are welcome, Pim. It was great to be here with you today. And thank you for everything you are doing. And maybe one day you and I can meet <laughs> in person. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be. I know I'm supposed thank to get you. to New Zealand soon. So who knows? Ah. Oh, let me know. I will. Thank you again. Thank